Hello everybody, and welcome to the Pixelogic ZBrush stream. I'm Foligon, your host for the next couple hours, and tonight we are going to be working on blocking out some characters. Uh, I just recently released a video over on my YouTube channel, and by recently I mean literally today, uh, about my character creation process uh, for the blockout phase. Uh, so if you're interested in that, it's kind of a short run through of, of that process if you guys want to go check that out as well. Uh, but today we're going to be kind of doing some demonstrations on a couple characters that I found here from the artist Oscar Vega. Uh, you guys should definitely check him out, check out his art station as well as his Instagram. He's got a bunch of really cool concepts. Uh, I think he posted these today. He had a bunch of Super Smash Bros. characters just kind of wearing stylish clothing. I thought it was really neat, so I grabbed a couple uh, screen grabs and threw them here into ZBrush using the Spotlight tool. So that'll be my reference tool for this evening. Um, if you guys want to check out more stuff by me, uh, since the last time I streamed, I recently launched my Mastering Appeal course that I've been working on for the past like nine months or so. You probably heard me talk about it during the last stream and many streams throughout the past as well. So that's finally live. There are, I think, five seats left for registration. So if that sounds like something that is interesting to you, that is gumroad.com slash Foligon. And it's this, for, uh, this uh, first one here, Mastering Appeal. That is a seven week long course. And if you guys wanna learn more about that, just go and click on it and uh, you'll be able to read more on that. As well as my other courses are on here, brushes, materials, all the stuff that I use professionally to do my work in ZBrush. Again, Gumroad slash Foligon. All right, welcome everybody. I see some people joining into the chat. We got Frank here over on Facebook. How you doing, Frank? Hola, Holt, hello, and Chris as well. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Late last night, I tweeted that Home Alone 2 was better than Home Alone 1 because it objectively, it just objectively is, right? We can all agree that that is true, but Chris, for some odd reason, is uh, in the belief that Home Alone 1 is better, which is just absurd. <laughs> Solis, hello from Brazil. Welcome, welcome. All right. Uh... I say we go ahead and get started, and as more people kind of pour in, I'll talk about, you know, what I'm doing again. But essentially, we're just going to be doing some blockouts tonight. I released a video over on my YouTube channel kind of talking about my process and what I like to do uh, during this stage. But yeah, uh, I would also like to do this with some poly paint as well, because <clears throat> I think that'll be fun. I actually did this with my tiger character, if you guys have seen that sculpt. I posted a render here recently. Let me pull them up. Uh, so the entire stream for this is over on the Pixelogic YouTube channel. If you guys want to watch the process for this, you guys can go check it out. Uh, I got a little turntable down here I guess we can watch real fast. Get a little profile view. Uh, but yeah, the entire process is over on the Pixelogic YouTube channel if you guys want to see that. But we are going to be doing something uh, very similar tonight to how I started blocking out that character. And we're just going to be using polygon primitives to do all of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, essentially, what I like to do is just duplicate a sphere a few times, and I'll just kind of grab a few of these. I don't always start, you know, the exact same way. And we're going to keep these really simple and low poly, uh, because if I can, I would like to do these kind of quick, and maybe do more than two. We'll see how long the first one takes or see how long we take on it and then kind of play it by ear and go from there. But yes, Oscar Viga, everybody. Go check out more of his work as well. He's got some really good stuff. All right, so we got the rib cage, basic, basic, basic rib cage, as well as a quick little stomach and some hips. I pretty much just use the move brush during this phase. I also, you'll see me use a couple other brushes, like for instance, I use the trim brush here to kind of plane that out, trim dynamic, or at least a similar brush to the trim dynamic. But yeah, pretty simple stuff. Just working with spheres. That's how we like to do it. 
and then we'll start getting the head shape here in a little bit, but we don't want to get too caught up in that just yet. So I'll just kind of squeeze some stuff around real quick and get a kind of a decent direction for that. And something of a neck, <laughs> a little, little wide, but that's okay. Vicana, welcome, welcome back. Felipe, hello, how are you doing? Uh, Gavorg, I believe it's Gavorg. Hi, <laughs> how are you doing, Gavorg? Um, Soulless Lady is. It's also in the Pixelogic presenters. I'm not sure what what you mean by that. M maybe the uh, the tiger, or the uh, the process for that. Yes, you can absolutely watch that entire thing over on the Pixel Logic YouTube channel, which is what I believe I said. Um. Oh, the uh, the playback. Yes, uh, it is on Twitch as well, uh, but. Uh, I don't believe it's there forever. I believe they retain like, I want to say about a month's worth of uh, VODs. Somebody can correct me in chat uh, that maybe knows specifically, but I, be I believe it's like a month or so. So they might not all be in there unless they have a link to the uh, YouTube playlist. That would be a little bit different though. All right. so. A common mistake that I see a lot of the time is people make the uh, the chest and rib cage way too thick. It's actually a lot wider than it is thick, much much wider. So we'll take that into account here, and just continue using our move brush to push and pull some some junk around. Literal junk. Look at this stuff, all low poly, chunky and junky. But that's how we like it, especially in these early stages. Let's duplicate. I'm going to use my IMM primitive insert sphere. Whoop. Yes, more spheres. You could use a cylinder for your legs. I mean, you could use whatever the heck you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but what is important is just kind of getting something in there. You should not be concerned at proportion uh, with proportions at this stage. You should just be concerned with kind of getting something on your canvas. Uh, which is what we are doing right now. Dang, those that skirt is a very high-waisted skirt. So we will. I'm going to be blocking out the clothing as well. So we'll be taking that into account for this. But I at least want to get the basics of some legs in here, and then go from there. Always too thick when you duplicate that. <clears throat> my throat is not my friend right now. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's do some quick arms, and then we'll kind of go from there. I'm thinking some arms, and then I will do maybe like a a cylinder or something for the skirt. Maybe work on proportions very quickly before we do that. I don't typically like to worry about, I, I typically just eyeball stuff as quick as humanly possible in this stage and then worry about proportions after I have everything in place. It's a lot easier to worry about proportions once you have more things to kind of reference against it. A-B-L-Y-R, welcome. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? All right, let's get some Ermies some armies and some sleeveys later on. I typically like to make some kind of transitional deltoidal shape up here just to kind of represent this um, transition between the rib cage, the, the torso and the arm because the shoulder girdle is a super complicated area as well as kind of just my um, just uh, past work is a really kind of focused on uh, a lot of physical stuff, especially in toys and creating joints and arms and legs and everything else. Kind of just started doing that after a while. 
I find it to be pretty helpful, especially when sculpting the armpit. The armpit is such an annoying uh, place to work on, and having these kind of separated out makes, I think, makes that process a lot easier. Just trying to figure out length here really quick. Uh, this is very much incorrect in my, uh, my torso transition here. This is going to be moved up quite a bit, something more so like that. That's a bit closer to what we're going to want. And we'll combine those in a little bit. But for now, they're not going anywhere. She has some long legs. So I have a feeling I'm going to, eh, maybe not. We'll see. We'll just move these up for now, I think. All right, I'm going to duplicate this little arm segment really quick. Very nice. All right, so we're not going to do any uh, facial features or anything like that. Again, the for those that are just joining us, essentially what we're doing tonight is focusing on the blockout process. And I'll be able to answer any questions that you guys have about that along the way. Um, just today on my YouTube channel, a new video was released kind of talking about my blockout process. And I figured it would be nice to kind of do it live as well so I can talk about some more tools that I'll be using and maybe try to push a little bit past the blockout process. We'll see how how uh, long how long this one takes, and then kind of play it by ear. But uh, in terms of tools, really, we're sticking to very simple stuff right now. Just kind of the move brush, as well as maybe a little bit of stuff like the trim and some clay brushes to build up and plane out form. But other than that, keeping things nice and simplistic. So this is pretty much how all human characters that I create kind of start in this blockout phase, just like these very kind of simplistic mannequins, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, during this stage, I typically will not do hands or feet. I will represent them with very simplistic geometry, or if I have a base hand, which I do, I have a handy dandy handy brush that is a hand that I sculpted that is a base hand that I use on a lot of different characters uh, just because it's a very good starting point for that uh, but we're not going to be using this because you guys don't have this and I believe this is on my gum road uh, the uh, hand brush there but I'm not positive what we're going to be doing instead is just doing what I normally do which is representing that hand with some kind of primitive I typically like to do a, uh, where is it, a little cube here, just something simple, oops, and I guess I'll just stretch that out, make it a little bit more thin, and just something like that. It's important that we don't get caught up on the details. Right now, we more so just focus on what's important, which next will be uh, proportions here in just a moment. But first, let me give this cube a little uh, wrist, a little kind of, just a quick cylinder, something like that, just so I can transition a little bit better. All right. So let's do proportions and then we'll worry about shapes uh, a little bit more here. And maybe we can add on a quick foot as well here. And by quick foot, I mean <laughs> very quick foot. I'm just using some trim features in the uh, uh, transpose line to very quickly, whoops, kind of trim up some of the shape because I'm too lazy to insert another cube. That's right. <laughs> That's okay. It'll be nice and quick. Something like that. Get a little kind of 
slide down a little triangular form there eh, something like that doesn't need to be perfect or really even beautiful <laughs> it most certainly isn't not yet all right so we got our hands we got our feet we got all the parts and pieces in here that will make up the body at this stage uh za senaru kitsune welcome back how are you doing Sean asks, why this and not Z-Spheres? Uh, I find that this is faster. I find that this is easier. And uh, this is the way I have done it for a while. I have used Z-Spheres in the past, but um, I personally do not enjoy using Z-Spheres all that much. I much prefer uh, using primitive shapes to block out almost everything that I sculpt, typically spheres. <laughs> Already looks better than your feet. Well, I don't know about that, but We'll see how we do moving forward here. So let me uh, do a quick little lineup here with our reference image. So we'll essentially just get our feet, or you know what, better yet, let's get our ankles. Whoop, boop, boop. A little ankle line there. And then I will just scale this down, or I'm sorry, not scale down, silly of me. Just zoom out, whoop, there we go. All right, so that's kind of basically lined up. Maybe not perfect, but I think it's, uh, there we go, close enough. So let me do, in our movie, I'm just gonna turn on my timeline really quick and drop a little mark in here. So essentially what this will do is if I move this, uh, zoom out, whatever, I can just get that position back really quick. Uh, you can also do this with the new camera feature, but it doesn't work with perspective off, I don't believe, which is why I did this. Um, during the blackout phase, I typically don't use perspective all that much. So at this stage, what we are going to do is work on some proportions, but not uh, to the point where you know they're detrimental to everything that we do moving forward. So what that looks like is right now, just kind of scaling up the head a little bit. We'll have to work on the head shape a little bit later, uh, the neck needs to be inflated or scaled up, whichever you prefer. Ooh, we'll just inflate down here. Probably need some, a little bit more um, curve in there as well. I think that the rib cage and torso could be wider. So let's see here, where'd our, where'd our parts and pieces go? Let's merge all these together. So everything in the torso, I'm gonna merge just like that. And then I'm gonna run a quick Dynamesh at the uh, default value. You could even lower your Dynamesh resolution if you want. Um, oh, actually I will do that because that's a little too high. So I'm gonna lower that just to make that a little easier to work on. Here, we'll just do this. We'll just do a quick Z remesh to make that the easiest possible way to work on. Uh, so I want to widen the torso. It um, gets a little thin here in the hip region. So we want to thicken that up some, as well as take our pinch brush and kind of block out the plane change that will be the rib cage, as well as, let's see, Draw some quick lines here. Like I said, the uh, the skirt is very kind of high waisted there. I'm gonna thicken that up just a tad, as well as widen our hips. Figure out where the legs are gonna go. Good that you work on all of these at the kind of same stage. And what I mean by that is don't kind of get too far ahead on one piece of geometry and let everything else suffer because of that. So you can kind of get tunnel vision while you're working on stuff. And it's really easy to kind of work on one thing for a long time without paying attention to the rest. So I tend to jump around as much as I can, especially during those early stages. 
Let's see. Let's adjust our legs here. You know what? For now, eh, it's fine. I'm gonna turn off our material and poly paint, but we'll just leave it. Let's adjust our legs a little bit here. Kind of slide our thighs a little bit closer together and just start working on this shape. Because right now, you know what? To, to make this easier, I hate working on anything that's really close to the symmetrical plane. So I'm just gonna delete one side of that. It makes it so much easier to work on. And we will just very quickly do some quick adjustments here. Let's see. From the profile. It's actually not too terrible, but we're gonna want to move our body forward a bit more, which is fine. And let's see, let's get this leg. For the calf, the outer edge is always a little bit higher than the other. So I'm just kind of trying to create some interesting shapes based on what I know already and what I can also see here. So I don't have a ton to go off of, but I've sculpted a lot of legs in my day. We'll just kind of keep it pretty simple in terms of shape. Plus we're just trying to do the block out here. So it's important that we don't get too carried away. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to that. And I'm just gonna move these foot these foots, <laughs> these feet, in and rotate them out a little bit. All right, and now I should be able to just mirror that back over to the other side without too much of an issue. Uh, so you can see that I moved the legs forward quite a bit and it's not really aligned with the body. The reason I did that was because uh, the character was feeling like it was leaning back quite a bit. And uh, to avoid that from happening, I uh, already slid the legs forward some, and I'm going to move the body to compensate for that. So let's go into Transpose Master and just grab everything. All right, here, we'll grab the legs and just invert our, our mask there. Whoop. There we go. So weight-wise, that's not feeling awful, but... There's still some things that we're going to need to fix here. Quite a few things. <laughs> so I'm just still in Transpose Master making some quick adjustments. I am using my Transpose line or your 3D gizmo to control, click, and drag, and you can mask off a polygon island that way to make some quick selections like I'm doing. You could also turn on stuff like auto masking as well, um, like polygroup masking, something like that. But I don't use that um, only in very specific instances. The reason I don't use it is because it doesn't allow you the ability to start your brush stroke or move brush on a separate object. So if you want the outside of a circle to affect geometry ever so slightly, like it is right now, uh, you can't do that with auto masking because it'll freak out. I'll show you real quick. Uh, mask by polygroup all the way up. So I want to affect this mesh, but only a little bit. Or I'm sorry, those are separate polygroups, so we'll do it down here on the leg. I want to affect this mesh, but only a little bit. I can't click up here because it'll think I'm trying to do that. Even if it's masked, it still won't work. So that is why I don't use that. Same thing with, um, uh, what's the other checkbox? I think I removed it from my UI because it was almost exactly the same as polygroups. So I did remove it. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's not important. All right, let's continue on. Just very quickly shaping up our arm. These aren't gonna be anything special. Just a quick couple moves here. Remember that we're just focusing on the blackout. All 
right. Let's rotate our wrist hand combo back and move that back in. What's her other arm doing? It's grabbing her bag. Nah, that's fine. We'll just stick with that for now. All right, let's get out of T pose or transpose master. That is up in your Z plugin. If you want to check that out up here, Z plugin, transpose master. Uh, Danilo, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well, as well as everybody else that's joining us. I see that there are many more people here now, so welcome everybody. Got people over on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. And I think so far I saw one person from Brazil and one person from somewhere in France. So welcome, welcome everybody. If you're over in France, then it's very late at night then, wouldn't it be? All right, so we've done it. We've finished our block out, not quite. There's still quite a few things that we can do here. Uh, the shape of the head, we could start to get this quite a bit closer. There's quite a few uh, changes that we could make here to kind of work on this. And notice that I have not really remeshed any of this geometry. It's still the original just sphere that I stretched and put in here. Other than the torso, which I dynameshed or I remeshed, Z remeshed really, really quick at a low resolution. Like, just keep that in mind. It's all, all really low poly, simplistic, not focusing on anything uh, major right now in terms of like details. We're all just focusing on simple, simple shapes. All right, so let's let's like get the shape of the head just a little bit more defined. You don't have to do anything crazy up here. I more so just want to get some basics down. And hopefully have enough time to do Luigi, because he's looking fresh. All right, let's do a quick Dynamash. And things are getting stretched up here. And if you're having tr I, I have this material on, this uh, Zebra paint, or it's very similar to a Skin Shade 4 material. If you're having trouble seeing your mesh, I recommend switching to a basic material. I like my clay sculpting material a lot. It's very nice. That's why I use it. <laughs> but I had the poly paint on there just because we can probably uh, Get some color for like the shirt, the hair, everything else. Uh, but you can see that the materials are messed up on some of our other stuff. That's just from sculpting with certain brushes that have RGB on at lower resolutions. You can kind of mess that up. But in terms of a basic shape here, I think we're we're fine for the head, for the um, the face. There's a lot more that we could do here, but I think we should move on before we get too distracted. Maybe like one or two more minutes. I like working on faces a lot. They're the most fun part of character sculpting, in my opinion. They're the thing that everybody looks at at least. All right, 
So I'm running a quick Z remesh on that. And yeah, that looks fine for the most basic shape. And let me delete this extra mesh from earlier. And at this point, I would probably start combining some stuff if need be. But uh, since we're kind of just trying to do this really quickly, I'll avoid kind of taking this too much further. And we can start doing the hair, clothing, etc., etc. So let's start with the skirt because that is going to be by far the easiest. And to do that, I'm just gonna insert a cylinder. And let's get the color there. just move this into place. So it's a pretty high-waisted skirt. So we'll try to get that. And it goes down to about knee length or so. So something like that. Looks like she's in a garbage can right now, but we'll fix that. <laughs> All right, so what I am going to do, show you guys a little trick here. I'm gonna turn off my arms. And I'm going to use the slice curve brush to insert some poly loops here. But real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Chris, welcome. Sorry if you said it already, but is that Zelda? Yes, it is Zelda, I believe. So we got Zelda here and Luigi. Oscar Vega posted these today over on ArtStation. Just a bunch of Smash characters wearing uh, different cool outfits. Connor, welcome. Welcome over on Facebook. Uh, Connor asks, how do you uh, deal with anatomy in stylized characters, getting the nose bridge and eye socket inset to look correct from the front and side angle? I talk about um, eyelid order uh, a lot, and that has a lot to do with it. Getting the proper amount of depth in your character's face is also very important. I have a huge backlog of videos uh, going through um, sculpting all sorts of different characters, stylized humans, as well as you know crazy things like like Goobert here. Um, so if you are interested in those, I would go check them out over on my YouTube channel. Uh, it would take too long to kind of go through the entire process right now while we're doing these blockouts. Uh, but if you're interested in maybe something a little bit more uh, course driven. Uh, my new course, Mastering Appeal, just launched uh, last week in between last stream and this stream, which is on my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash polygon. So if you want to read up more on that, or maybe check out my smaller course on uh, sculpting stylized and appealing female faces, you can maybe check out that. Uh, but again, YouTube channel, tons of free stuff. New course over here, gumroad.com slash polygon. All right, so we're going to use the Slice Curve brush on this cylinder, I'm gonna turn on transparency, and essentially what I want to accomplish right now is draw in an edge loop wherever there is a hit or break in my surface. So what I'm doing here is finding points where I need extra geometry. So somewhere around here, that's probably enough. And then what I'm going to do is just start scaling in around these different points to kind of form fit the body. So pretty simple, it's kind of pulling in here from the side. And I will smooth that out as well so I can see how that's working out. And you know what, we're actually pretty close at least on the profile already in terms of kind of getting where we want from the back. Not quite as much, but we will get there in time. Looks like she's got a big, big old badonk back here. Zelda is not known for her big badonk, uh, as far as I know. <laughs> so we'll kind of tone that back a little. Whoop. And 
And then there's a ton of asymmetry going on here as well as a split in the fabric, which is very interesting. Uh, to do something like a skirt like this, I would probably remove the end caps from this, which is pretty simple to do. And then add some thickness to this geometry later on. I would not immediately add thickness to something like this as I find that that is typically a bad idea. Um, it just makes things a little bit more difficult to work with. I wouldn't add thickness to anything until uh, sometimes even after posing the character. For something like this, probably wouldn't add thickness to this until after you know I add the asymmetry and everything else, which we don't have to do right this second. D D S Y G K K. What's up? High fashion. That's right. I believe that's what the. I don't know if I would call some of these high fashion. I don't exactly. Exactly know what categories fall directly into high fashion. <laughs> uh, for the shirt, uh, what I'll do is I'll just take this little sleeve here, the sleeve color. Fill that in for my arm. And I'm actually going to use my deltoidal transition up here as a point for where that sleeve will start. So I've just dynameshed my arms together. These little two stretched spheres that I created, right? Nothing crazy here. We could maybe even sculpt in an elbow, but really. I don't think we need to take too much time with these. Uh, it's more so just to get some extra form in here very quickly. Kind of block that out a little bit more for the tricep area. I think that's probably even a little bit much. So let's just Z remesh this straight up. And that's probably even too high of a resolution, honestly. Let's see. Let's do some quick corrections. That's yeah, it's a little much, I think. I think we want to keep this even more simple. All right. So something like that, something along those lines. And up here, I'm gonna trim this. I'm just gonna make this a little wider here at the top. So I want it to look like her arms, like she's got arms, because <laughs> right now we've just kind of created these sleeves very quickly. And then in here, we just want to stretch these little spheres down, our little deltoids. Or better yet, what you could do is instead of doing that, you could just actually duplicate and then move that part down a little bit in there. So you could retain this shape if you wanted to for any reason. But honestly, I think we're probably fine to just get rid of all that extra form. Try and keep these simplistic, clean. Let's see, for the torso, this is a little kind of wavy up here. We probably want to do something about that. Hmm, let's see. Let's take our torso and do some quick additional form for her chest. You know what, here, let's do this real quick first. I'm gonna do a very quick clavicle. I don't even think this is necessary for this. 
just to get like a little extra form in here for this transition because it's not really reading super well right now. I think this will help. Can't actually see all that well right now. Huh. Turn off our material just to make things a bit easier on us. All right, that's not as bad as I thought it was, but the geometry is getting really stretched in here because of the pinch brush. It's a lot higher resolution than I wanted. That's okay. I like to, at least on the back, I do this a little bit on the front just to get a little pinch through here. I'm holding the Alt key while I do that. Just to kind of break the form there, I typically do this on the back as well. And we can't see her butt, so we're not going to spend time sculpting that up. Maybe Luigi. Maybe we can sculpt Luigi's butt. <laughs> All right, so uh, some quick breasts on here. Just an insert sphere. For what we have going on that is visible with the shirt, these are going to be blended in super strongly. So I am, I probably shouldn't have even used an insert sphere for this. But very quickly, we'll just do that and then quick inflate. It's probably even too much, but we'll just dynamesh them all together. I think our Dynamesh resolution is a little high. We're at half a mil. Let's drop that down. There we go. It's a bit closer to what we were looking for. So I'm just going to uh, smooth this all together right now. And let's see. Swap our materials back. All right, so very quickly, let's find that line somewhere about right there. Whoops, let me make sure those are the same poly group. All right, so I'm splitting off my body. Just this little extra section right here. And I'm going to use that to represent her little shirt. Here, let's, uh, instead of scaling that up, let me do a deformation inflate. It's a little bit more clean on stuff like this. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to remesh this as well. And we'll knock out all the excess form that we don't really need at this stage. Jason Peacock got some peaches. What's up, man? Uh, Elustat, how are you doing? Any tips on manipulating curves? I always ruin them so fast when I use snake hook or move. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. I would assume that you're not talking about curves in the traditional sense of curves in ZBrush. Um, like a curve, right? A curve brush. I think you're just talking maybe about a tube of geometry like this. Like, oh, I messed it up with the move brush, something like that. That might be what you mean. Uh, if that is, uh, then yes, I do have some tips. Um, your resolution of your geometry is probably too high. So I recommend using something like the Z modeler brush to delete edge loops. If you don't know how to use the Z modeler brush, 
I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel uh, that is um, maybe two or three hours long that goes through the entire hard surfacing tool set in ZBrush. Uh, and along the way, you get to make a clock, an alarm clock. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Polygon. Uh, so having less geometry typically makes things a little bit easier to manipulate. I would also recommend using masks. Masks are your friend. Masks and rotations with the transpose line or the 3D gizmo, one or the other. Take your pick. Doesn't really matter which, just whatever you're more comfortable with. That would be my recommendation to at least get you started instead of using specifically just the move brush and just the snake hook. Uh, okay, so from here, I'm just gonna close holes on this because really that's what we like. Or you know what, here, instead I will add some thickness. I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> uh, extrude all polygons, where are you? There you go in. Beautiful. Now we have some thickness. The uh, geometry here is uh, way too uh, detailed for what we what we see in the concept. In this form, ooh, our normals are flipped. I'm gonna fix that really quick. There we go. I think we're good. Uh, so, we just need to simplify all of this out. And this is why you don't add thickness to stuff in the early stages. It kind of messes you up, but that's okay. We'll leave that. If we want to do some ruffles on there, we could do that later. For now, I think we want to continue on with the block out. So let's move on up to the hair. Hair is always just a blast to work on, isn't it? Maybe along the way we can fix a couple things here in the arms. So there is so much that needs fixing here. But in terms of a block out, I think we're fine. All right, so up on the head. Hair, hair, hair. Hair is so... So annoying. <laughs> hair is a lot. Hair can be a lot. This type of hair isn't too bad, especially for the um, the block out. You just want to break it into chunks, into sections. So we have the section that is covering her head. That's one section. The ponytail is a second section. We have her little sideburn-ish uh, strands of hair as well. And then we have these two kind of braids, or not braids, um, bangs on the front of her hair. So we have one, two, three, four, four kind of major chunks. And then we can mirror two of those to get the uh, other half of that. So we'll probably start with the most simple one, which is the shape of the head. But let me, before we move on, check out the chat. Uh, what type of model graphics tablet are you using? Uh, Cintiq. Are you good enough to sculpt the majesty of Luigi's butt? Probably not, but I will do my best. Um, yes, yes, okay, I was talking about the right thing. Beautiful, cool. Jason. Oh, your badonk comment. That's right. <laughs> uh, let's see, anything else? Have I experimented with the project primitive yet? Uh, asks Artin Time. Yes, I have. Uh, I was actually a beta tester, so I had a lot of time to play around with it. Here's the worst. Uh, it can be. It absolutely can be. Um, so let's let's try to make it a little bit easier. So like I said, we're going to be splitting things into sections, right? So the first section is right here, this part that's just covering the head. Let's do that first. I will be duplicating my head and essentially just drawing out a mask to represent that chunk of hair. And it doesn't need to be perfectly placed right now. I mean, it, it, this can change later and it absolutely will. You're never going to get anything right on the, uh, the first try with, with something like this. So let's just grab that 
and I'm gonna take the easy route and just kind of close holes on this chunk. And I'm gonna scale that up. We can sample our hair color. And just like that, we have the first section of our hair starting to get figured out here. So let's continue on uh, next with the ponytail, which we'll just use an IMM primitive brush again to insert a sphere. And for this, hmm, let's see. I'm gonna get like a piece going up and then one kind of coming down here. Maybe about right there. Looks a little lower in the concept, but it's kind of hard for me to tell. All right, and then we're just gonna pull this down and it gets a little wider as it goes out towards the bottom and it comes down all the way to her skirt. We got a little swish forward, a little swish back, a little swish back forward. And it looks like it gets pretty wide down here. So you've noticed, you know, geometry just all stretched to hell, doesn't even matter. If you want, you can remesh Dynamesh, but just keep it super, super low resolution. Emphasis on super low res. I like to use the back face masking brush to inflate certain areas because I find that the inflate brush is a little hard to control to get specifics. And I have a little bit better luck with the back move back face masking. And I will just thicken this jank up. and combine these two pieces. A little high in terms of res. There we go. So something like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. I think it could be uh, quite a bit wider and thicker. for uh, the top area of the head. Kind of like, looks to me like she's got quite a bit more um, lean back going on than what we have. So that would probably help us maybe get that working a little bit better for that as well. That's why it's important to get all the parts and pieces in as early as you can because everything proportionally kind of plays off of each other. So I wouldn't be able to figure out how long the hair was unless I had put that skirt in or unless if I was kind of measuring it up against the reference 24 seven. But you don't really need to do that if you do it once for something like the skirt and then you can use the skirt as a reference point for later on as long as it's correct, <laughs> right? All right, so uh, I don't know, we can maybe just do a quick Ziri mesh on that. Keep it nice and low poly and we'll return to it later or maybe we won't, it really doesn't matter because this is supposed to be quick. All right, so let's inflate our hair just a bit. And I don't know, sure, we'll leave that for now. All right, let's get a couple other uh, segments of hair. So we have the base and then the ponytail, and then we need the kind of sideburn strands of hair as well as the two bang pieces. So I think the uh, side strands are gonna be easier, so I'll do those next with a curved tube snap brush. And I will draw these out. Let's see, down to the shoulder and then forward a little bit. Ooh, and it's not going to cooperate. So it's snapping too much there. So in your stroke menu, I'm gonna turn on 
uh, as line under curve. And there we go, we just get like a tube of geometry now. And then you can use your move brush to further refine this. So if someone was just asking about, hey, when I'm working on, holy crap, go away. <laughs> oh my gosh, there we go. Um, when I'm working on geometry with the move brush, you know, stuff is getting distorted and you can kind of see how it's happening here. You'll, in, in all honesty, you'll just get kind of better with it, um, better at it with time. And as you kind of get better at controlling your mesh in ZBrush and you'll learn kind of how to do that. I mean, I'm just doing this with the move brush right now. And as it started to get distorted, I would just push it back the other way. But um, really, it's nothing too special. I think it just, like I said, gets easier with time. And then if stuff is getting to a point where you really just can't control it anymore, go into your, uh, your Z remesher over here, drop down the target poly count as low as it will go, and remesh the geometry. Mine is already pretty low poly, so um, you know I could maybe cut it in half one time if it would let me. It might not though, uh, just because it's so low res already. Uh, but for something like this, maybe I could delete a few edge loops manually to make it more simple. But since we're just in the blackout phase, I like keeping things messy intentionally because it forces me to um, not really get too focused on the uh, details, which is very important at this stage. All right, we got those. If we want, we could maybe do something for the ears just so we have those in place. I typically don't do ears this early on, but I think they're a pretty big part of the character's silhouette. I think it wouldn't hurt to Gonna pull these out really quick. And I'm just gonna fix the shape a little bit. They're kind of like dagger sharp. <laughs> All right. I think that's probably fine. Just to get some more taper on these. And maybe try to get the geometry to be a little bit more simple. There's some bad angle there. Man, I suck at <laughs> rotating stuff. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So we've done the ears. It honestly looks like the ears are pretty low on her head, uh, but I won't worry about that right now. Something that I would handle later. Let's do the bangs. And those bangs are something else. Typically when stuff has enough of a curve that it flips 180 degrees over on itself, it's a little annoying to make. It's, it's a little bit more complicated. So to make this easier, I'm gonna use a custom brush that I created called the Cube Tube Brush. And draw out a quick piece of geometry. I'm gonna work on one side here just to make this easier on me. And you know what, to make it even easier, I'm just gonna make this into a plane. Oops, I accidentally deleted my, uh, my head cap there, my hair. Get that back real quick. All right, so I'm gonna use, uh, it's, it's just a quick plane of geometry, nothing too crazy. And I'm just gonna add in a couple edge loops, move it around. And try to conform it to the shape that I see as quick as I can. 
uh, where are her eyes? So her eyes are, this is kind of what I'm going to use as my guideline for where this should be. It will be somewhere around there. Something like that. Uh, will I be splitting the hair? Um, probably not if you're referring to creating the segments back here. I would not split the hair further for that. Typically I'll just create the basic piece of geometry that fit, uh, fits the silhouette or block out of that form as best as possible. And then I will, uh, from there, begin to add in additional strands of hair with something like a curved tube or a cube tube, some kind of curved brush on top of that, just to um, have that block out there as a reference point for that first. Chicken Hawk, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Life goes good. How are you doing? The cube tube, TM, that's right. <laughs> my my creation, the cube tube. It's uh, one of my favorite brushes because it has saved me a fair amount of work in finagling with the uh, curve tube snap brush. So for reference, I've shown this many times, but with the curve tube snap brush, it is a tube, oh, sorry, let me turn off as line. It is a tube of geometry, okay? But you can go into your brush modifiers. It's a little hard to see, let me, I know it's a, hard to see with my background color. So brush modifiers, set the brush mod to four, and now it will be a tube of geometry, a almost cube tube resembling brush. But unfortunately, one thing that this brush does is that the geometry is very dense and it puts these little end cap verts on the bottom, which is very frustrating. So I ended up creating a custom triparts weld brush uh, that does essentially the same thing. It just does it a lot cleaner, gives you some nice poly groups and the geometry doesn't have those weird end cap points that you have to deal with. So I use that brush all the time. I love the, the cube tube brush. I also love the curved tube snap brush. They're both, uh, both good for different things. But yes, if you are interested in that, that cube tube brush, you can get that as well as a bunch of other curved brushes over on my Gumroad. Just Google Gumroad Folygon and you'll, you'll find it. So I have essentially gotten this where I want it. I think maybe, you know, probably like curves back in on itself a little bit here, right? And it's probably a bit closer to her face. I cannot grab that vert. There we go. So I think um, I think I'm gonna try to like skew this really quick, Whoop. something like that. All right, and then from here I would like to give this some thickness. I'll use the same technique that I used before: extrude all polygons. All right, and there we go. We got our two basic meshes for our bangs. That looks like they're actually come forward more there and obviously they come together more in the middle but it's actually a little hard for me to do that with this geometry because they'll touch in the middle and then they'll merge together. So I'll have to do something a little bit different here. Hmm, let's see. I, I, I would say that that's probably, you know, close enough for the block out, but we can maybe 
finagle with that a little bit longer. But there we go. There's our quick block out of our, our Zelda sketch that we got over here. We could spend some more time, you know, obviously on a lot of different areas. Specifically making sure that all of this is kind of fitting and not poking through each other. But in terms of block out, I would say that that is a good place to stop on our Zelda character. And that took about an hour. So I think we should spend the next hour working on Luigi boy down here. So I'll, I will, um, I will bloop her up in the corner over here. Boop. Big old bloop. And we can swap on over to Luigi. And we will do a tile selected. Let's make sure that that is not hidden. Okay, so we should be good. All right, and then we will start a new character because we have a lot more people in here now so you guys can see the entire process from the from the beginning here as well. Um, we could even actually repurpose a lot of this, even though it's proportionally so different. Um, I'll show you how we can do that. So let's actually, let's do a t -t 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 copy tool, paste tool. So now I have a second Z tool that is completely different. So if I for instance, delete the hair that we just spent so long making, right? Goodbye hair. When we go back to the other one, you can see that it still has the hair. So copy and paste up here, very useful. All right, and Luigi doesn't have uh, these proportions exactly, so we'll have to change those as well. All right. So there's our body from Zelda that we quickly blocked out earlier. Now we'll be doing Luigi. And we'll, I, I think we'll use this as a starting point to uh, go a little bit faster. All right, before we go forward though, does anybody have any questions on the Zelda block out or anything else? Uh, nice trick with the bangs. Not a trick really, more just Moving verts around, nothing too crazy. <laughs> um, have I ever tried to eat a banana with the, the skin on? The peel? I have bitten into a banana peel. Doesn't taste super great, not very good. Uh, a bit crunchier. I like the way you spell crunch. <laughs> uh, yes, life is crazy. Uh, it's Luigi time, that's right. Gonzo. Awesome name, by the way. Welcome. How are you doing tonight? Or, or this morning, I don't know. Whatever time it is, wherever you guys are. Uh, I'm gonna turn on an extra light here real fast because it looks like it's getting a little bit darker outside. So one second. That should be a little bit better. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Coo, coo, coo. All right, we got Luigi. It looks like he's got a uh, hunchback turtle shell or something going on back here. We'll, uh, we'll have to play around with that. So I'm gonna create, let's see. Let's um, line him up. Or you know what? I I'm going to eyeball this first because there's so much here that is vastly uh, different from our original character proportionally speaking. Namely that big old noggin up top. So we'll deal with that first. Wow, why is that taking so long? I did a quick Ziri mesh on the body and it has frozen on us. We might have to close ZBrush and reopen it. I believe I quick saved um, right before this, so I don't think we'll lose anything. Uh, I've always had a hard time understanding how the insert mesh brush works. Well, we can take a look at that. It's pretty easy. I will show you. Uh, 
Ah, uh, awesome. That now looks exactly like Luigi. Okay, so you were asking, um, who was asking about the insert mesh brush? Saquik, something like that. All right, so there are a bunch of insert mesh brushes. There are quite a few, and you can even create your own. That's um, what I've done with my cube tube brush. That's an insert mesh brush, or at least a variation on, on um, insert meshes. It's, a, uh, it's an insert brush that got turned into a curved brush. So if you try to use an insert mesh brush on a subtool, you will get this warning that says, hey, you got subdivision levels. You got to delete them or freeze them to uh, use this brush. So click that. OK, we understand that. So we can delete or freeze our subdiv uh, subdivision levels. I would recommend that you never freeze your subdivision levels. I would say that it's a pretty bad practice unless you have a very good reason. Uh, and if you don't know what that reason is, don't use it. Just delete your subdivision levels temporarily because you can reconstruct them later. So I just deleted them. We're down here in this corner. Sorry, I'll scroll up. And then I can just click reconstruct and look, hey, we got our subdivision levels back. Pretty neat. So what I like to do when using insert mesh brushes is duplicate the subtool where I want to insert something, delete lower subdivision levels, grab my IMM brush, whatever it may be. Let's insert a sphere. And hey, look at that. Click and drag. And I have two eyeballs, two spheres that I can move and place around. But there's a problem. I now have this head and I have this one. So what you should do is hold the Control and Shift key, click on your sphere or the object that you just inserted, and go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And now you just have the head by itself and you have the newly inserted geometry by itself. So that is how you use IMM, the IMM primitive brush or insert multi-mesh brushes in general. So if you want to play around with that experiment, it's a pretty nice workflow that I like using a lot. And it's actually how I inserted all of the geometry here, most of it at least. I duplicated a lot of it too. But uh, Let's see, there was, there's a bunch of other questions in here now. Um, Let's see, what brush were you using to split the polys? Uh, I was possibly using the slice curve brush. Hold control and shift, click up here, slice curve, slice. That might be what you're talking about. Or the select lasso, same thing, control and shift up here, select lasso. And then a split hidden function, which is in your split menu down here. So possibly that as well. Uh, I'm new to ZBrush, I'd like to know what subdivision level should I start detailing? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends how much resolution you have in the subdivision level. Um, freezes all the time, yes. I need a mentor. Well, uh, if you guys are interested in courses, gumroad.com slash Folygon. I have some stuff on there, as well as my new course, which does involve uh, personal critiques each week for the seven week term. I just launched this uh, less than a week ago, I think. It was between, uh, I think it was last Thursday, actually. So between my last stream here on the Pixelogic channel. Gumroad.com slash Polygon. I have a bunch of stuff on there here. I'll share a quick link in chat for you. And there's also my YouTube channel, which I have a ton of uh, free content on there. If you want to go that route. Either or. Go crazy. I make it for you. For you beautiful people. Um, how much do I pay a mentor per month? One million dollars. Uh, there's an option to see while you are inserting the mesh. You can reconstruct. Yes, you can reconstruct subdivision levels as long as it has the ability to do so. If I dynamesh something, I can't reconstruct subdivision levels because there's no subdivision to reconstruct. But if I subdivide this once, delete it, Reconstruct. Hey, we're back where we started. Beautiful. It will actually be a little bit different the because when you subdivide geometry, it actually uh, shrinks in on itself ever so slightly. So it won't be like vert perfect. Uh, and depending on, here's a great example. So here we have a cube, a perfect cube, six-sided cube. If I subdivide this, 
it will turn into pretty much a sphere, right? And okay. so here's our original cube. And here is our subdivided sphere. But if I delete the subdivision levels and then reconstruct these later, actually, I won't even delete and reconstruct them. If I just step all the way back down to my cube, look at that. Look how it shrunk in size. So that's because the geometry actually shrinks in on itself a little bit. So here we are back. I'll delete higher, subdivide again, delete all my subdivision levels, reconstruct, and look, it's even smaller again. So your geometry shrinks in on itself the more you subdivide it. But that doesn't really matter if you intend to keep the subdivision levels because it will retain that form. Any good tips for making saliva? You're working on a Venom model from Spider-Man. Um, I would probably just use a sphere and start like pulling the geometry out and try to focus on going from thin to thick and focus on that kind of long thin area and then like a teardrop shape at the end. Uh, Zenfire, follow you on his YouTube channel is very good. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. All right. All right, gang. I think we're caught up. So let's, uh, let's Luigi here. We got like 45 minutes. I think that should be enough time to rough out the, uh, the most basic shapes here, especially since we're starting with some geometry in, uh, in place. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's, uh, let's start with the head. That was a pretty, that was a pretty good Mario. Let's let's a go. Let's grab this this big old donger of a noggin. And the shape of this head is pretty different uh, in terms of just like the major form here. I'm gonna try to capture that a little better. And Let's see. Obviously, Luigi doesn't have boobs, or at least from what we can see in this image or in general. Maybe that's a, uh, what's the YouTube channel? Game theory or whatever? Maybe that's a game theory. It's just a theory, a Luigi boob theory. All right, so he's got kind of a, thick to thin taper going on. It gets like wider as it goes up. Then he's got this big old bulbous nose going on in the front. Kind of like a clown thing going on, right? So one thing that is bad about working this way, for those that are kind of new, is that starting with preconceived geometry and anatomy can be a little disruptive uh, and not super great for for people uh, because you kind of want to stick to what you have, but it's very important that we uh, pretty much destroy just about all of this and just stick with the super, super basic stuff. So I need to line this up really quick. Drop us a new point here, merge down, and scale this head up to about there. That might be, it's pretty close, I think. A little too low. Rah, there we go. All right. And the neck has to scale up. And it's honestly at this stage, I, I think it's almost uh, bad to refer to a lot of these shapes as like saying head or neck. And often um, kind of get you in this mindset where you're like, oh, it's, it doesn't look anatomically correct. Well, of course it doesn't. It's 
freaking Luigi. <laughs> so it shouldn't. It definitely shouldn't. Alright, this thing needs to scale up quite a bit as well. Till we get a little bit lower. And Luigi's not going to be quite so curvilicious. And the legs. Oh man, this is kind of disturbing, isn't it? <laughs> That's okay. All right, let's just do an inflate on these. And these feet need to be much, much larger. These legs need to be much larger too. I was trying to inflate those, it wasn't really cooperating though. All right, and now I just want to spend some time to kind of get some of the major plane changes that is going to um, make up this character. So it looks like he's got this weird, I, I, this shirt is doing a lot of weird things in general. I got like a weird like turtle back going on over here. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to be. A little strange, but we will kind of make do with what we got. I don't think it looks bad, it just it's pushed a little too far. And let's see here. Let's just do a deformation inflate on these again. And pull those arms down quite a bit. So sometimes it's easier to start with geometry that you already have, even if it's from something like uh, Zelda that we had before. Sometimes it's easier to just do everything from scratch, especially when you're trying to uh, get rid of any preconceived anatomy or, or form that you've already created can often be difficult and uh, it's kind of a little frustrating to deal with some of that stuff. We've got this like slant going on here. This shape. Very strong, very strong curve. Snake hook and inflate. Uh, I don't particularly uh, use either of those brushes very often, although I do have them down here in my quick bar. Uh, I find that the uh, snake hook brush is good maybe for early stuff. I can block out, but that's about it. Uh, I like to uh, work with primitives though, as I've mentioned already. So I prefer that. And then the inflate brush, I tend to get better results with the move brush with back face masking on, in my experience. I think we want to simplify the shape of those legs even more into pretty much just straight cylinders. We'll see. All 
Uh, will I be good like you if I spend a whole day for half a year learning ZBrush? So every day for half a year learning ZBrush. I don't know, depending on how quick you can learn, it, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. I've been sculpting for every day for much longer, so I might just be a slow learner, I don't know. The Frosty's commercial tiger is done already. The the Frosted Flakes, I, Tony the Tiger. Um, yes, yes, Tony the Tiger is done. I said during the last stream that that would be the, um, the last one of me working on him. And uh, I have since then rendered him. Um, but yeah, here he is, here's the final render. Uh, if you guys wanna go check out the turntable, uh, you guys can go check out my art station to check that out. I'm just. Google Folygon, and I think it might even be the first link that pops up. Uh, and if you guys want to see the whole process, it's over on YouTube. Frosty. <laughs> Fro Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger got very thick there at the end. He, he lost control of his... Um, well, the self-control, I guess. All right, so I am deleting end caps, and these sleeves are much thicker than what I have. So let's see, inflate, very nice. And then for the pants, Pants are always um, a little frustrating, I think, to work on. So I like to split pretty much everything that I work on into primitive segments. So what I do for pants is I typically, you know, separate each leg into one section. But then I also split the wasted area, the wasted area, the waist area, and uh, the crotch into one uh, section as well. And typically that's just a, a basic cylinder. Uh, so let's do that very quickly here. I'm going to just delete this. And I will put a quick cylinder here. Oh. Just a little junk right there to make that go symmetrical really quick. Just a little quick fix. All right. So this is what I'll typically do, something like this. And let's proportionally figure out where we want this to live. So that's about the top of the pants, maybe a little higher. And then the crotch just needs to go a little lower. And then we will have to figure out the depth based on what we have visually over here. But for the most part, this guy's body isn't going to matter. It's pretty much just that shape of the shirt. So unless for some reason you'd be making this character and you know that he's going to be seen uh, without his shirt on, then uh, you'd want to sculpt the body, of course. But we're just blocking out, right? Blocking out characters tonight. So that's what we'll do here. So again, I'm not too certain what old hunchback here has going on. We'll try to get it as best as we can. I think it's more so just kind of filling in a, a visually interesting silhouette here from the three quarter view. And I do like that, but I think it kind of breaks down a little bit in 3D, so we'll probably at least initially not make it quite as strong. Let's go a bit wider, pull down this shape, come down a bit lower. Hide the arms for now, and 
do a quick remesh on this because it's a little high poly, a little, a little too dense. And then we'll do some more stuff on the pants. Do you ever use a flat plane to crest half a person? I'm not sure what you mean by crest. Crest half a person. Um, I use it so I can cut models from, for creating police badges, much like the US Mint does for coin. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to with the flat plane to crest half a person. If you could maybe explain it a little bit differently, I might understand what you're referring to. Uh, Polygon, what's going on, boy? How are you doing? Welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. We're, we're currently making Lumpy Luigi. He's a lumpy boy. Oops. He's got a lot going on. And I haven't messed with the shape of his head in, uh, in a moment. So the reason I put the nose in a little bit early is because it's a pretty large uh, portion of the character. Whoops. Breaks the silhouette pretty hard there, so we'll at least get that in. We'll do the same thing with the ears. Ooh, we got a little polygroup mix up here, hold on. Getting a quick ear in place. And you can see that the ear kind of helps fill in the silhouette quite a bit here. And again, just pretty much spheres for everything. Just kind of filling in the shapes as we go including this lump down here. I think the neck needs to be a bit thicker. And the head needs to come forward and quite a few other things, but we'll kind of start handling these one at a time. Uh, I will try this in Blender with my mouse. Uh, well, sculpting with the mouse is not the easiest thing in the world. That's for certain. So I wish you luck. <laughs> Look at that shape. That's such a... Luigi, what happened, man? You really let yourself go in many different directions. More directions than should be possible. I think it's just supposed to be like this really baggy sweater that he's wearing. More so than anything, but it's still a very, very interesting silhouette. I don't like this shape because it makes me feel like Luigi's got some real saggy boobs in there and that just makes me makes me think too much about Luigi. More so than I ever ever thought I would in my entire life. So we won't we won't delve too deep on in that rabbit hole. Uh, Rigid Damon, what's going on? How are you doing? Do you ever use a Do you ever use thick plane to create a half person, much like a US Mint coin president's head? Sorry, the iPhone typo. 
Oh, I think, um, are you referring to relief sculpture? I think this is what you, oh, that's not how you spell relief, but that is. Uh, is this what you mean, relief sculpture? This might be what you're, what you're talking about. So like this, like you, you're talking about like on a coin, that might be what you mean. Uh, I have done relief sculpture, yes. Uh, it's been a while. Um, trying to remember what the last thing that I did that was a relief. This was probably at least a few years ago. Um, I can't even remember what it was. But yes. Yes, I have done relief sculptures. Yes, Jason, it's called relief, relief sculpting. Uh, <laughs> until I buy a drawing pen, a uh, graphics tablet. Yep, gotta stick with what you got. I understand. All right, let's get back to our pants here. In terms of width, you know, I think we're probably not too far off. So let's, um, let's scale down that. And then these, uh, these legs are pretty much just straight cylinders, so that is Good for us, because it's very easy to do a cylinder, right? Everybody knows how to make a cylinder. I would hope. Um, and then on top of that, so there's like this. Let's see. Let's get the uh, heights correct here. So there's the crotch. And then there's the bottom of the pant leg about there. I've probably tapered it uh, more so than what it needs, so I don't know. Something like that. And then uh, we'll duplicate. Move down, down to down, down, down. And we'll put his leg in there, which is very thin. About a little bit more than half the size of the pant leg there. All right, cool. I think that is shaping up. And the pant legs are kind of connected there. If I do a mirror and weld, ooh, not quite what we want. Here. And he's got some big old clogs down there too. So the shape language for the feet is quite a bit different as well. While we're here, whoops, come back please. Let's get some color started on this. I think color is also uh, very helpful when you're trying to figure out proportions and stuff. We're not quite to the stage where we wanna fully worry about proportions. Most of what I've been doing up to this point is just um, kind of blocking out as much as I can early on. Whoops. The uh, neck there. Get these pants real quick. And the shoes. All right, so you can see for the, uh, the shoes, we actually need to pull this shape up quite a bit more. So to do that, just to like continue with the block out for what we have. I'm just going to Z modeler, extrude up this piece of geometry. Just to kind of 
fill that in a bit more. I think that should be okay for now. Debating on whether I wanna make this a little bit wider down here. I think it's probably fine. This is probably a bit wider as well. Uh, <laughs> it's Adam. It says, would you prefer to use Blender or ZBrush and why? Uh, obviously ZBrush, uh, I'm using it right now. I also work in ZBrush every day. Uh, the sculpting tools are much more powerful in ZBrush than in Blender. Uh, that is the main reason why I use ZBrush over Blender. The dog dog asks, hey, Folly, when you happen to feel down about your projects, what's your way of getting back in the train of modeling? Uh, well, da da dog dog, um, when I, at least when I was, I'm really bad at answering these kind of kinds of questions because I consider myself a very self-motivated person and I think to kind of be involved in art uh, especially from a um, non-fine arts point of view, um, you kind of need to be. You kind of need to be a pretty self-motivated person. Uh, so when the going gets rough, you kind of got to get going. Um, you can't let those, those moments slow you down. And I know there are times where life gets in the way and it does get tough, but you got to push through. Uh, one of my favorite qu Quotes of all time is by an off, um, not an author, an artist by the name of Chuck Close. He's a quadriplegic, lives his whole life in a wheelchair, uh, and he creates amazing face paintings. Uh, face paintings. Um, amazing portraits. Huge, giant portraits. This is Chuck Close, by the way. Probably painted himself. Uh, these are these are huge. Here he is next to one of his portraits. So. He lives his whole life in a wheelchair. And he also has face blindness, which means he has a very hard time remembering people's faces. I think is why, which is one of the reasons why he uh, got into uh, painting portraits. Uh, so I think he has like some movement in his hands and he uses a very small tool to like move kind of dot by dot to kind of go around and move this little mechanical arm and create what he needs. I think he maybe can use a paintbrush as well. Not entirely positive, but that's a little backstory on who Chuck Close is. But uh, one of his famous quotes is, um, he essentially says, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just get up and go to work. And, you know, as a professional artist, as somebody who gets paid, you know, when stuff gets rough, you know, at your job, you still got to do your job. And maybe it's a good kind of mindset to get into instead of, you know, if you want to treat this as a career later on, maybe start thinking of it that way now and kind of uh, kind of get in that mindset a little bit early. Like I said, I'm very bad at answering these types of questions because I am a very self-motivated person, or at least I consider myself to be. Um, so, you know, everybody has bad days, but uh, I find sculpting to be fun and therapeutic. I enjoy doing it, uh, which is why I do it. So, you know, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, everybody does exactly what they want to do. So, you know, if you want to play video games, you'll play video games. If you want to sculpt, you'll sculpt. If you want to watch TV, you'll watch TV, right? Do what you want to do. I'm not, I'm not going to hold it against you. The only person that suffers at the end of it all is you, right? Don't, don't get to do what you want to do. So I would say try to find what you want to do and do it. Again, bad at answering these types of questions. <laughs> Or at least I, I think I'm bad at answering these types of questions. All right, let's uh, let's get back to this shirt. I don't understand why the Dynamis Res is so high on this. Jason, Jason says thank you. Jason, why are you saying thank you? Ah, uh, the uh, the relief. Jason was the one asking about the reliefs earlier. Not a problem, Jason. Happy to help, man. OK. 
Can you mathematically describe a cylinder? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Maybe. It's kind of round and long. That's a pretty good explanation. All right, let's simplify the geometry in these arms, much like what we did with our legs. Just delete a bunch of edge loops that we don't need. Whoa. And let's see. I thought I made these longer. I guess not long enough. Not nearly long enough. And let's get some slices in here for all those beautiful hits and breaks and surface turns and everything else. So I've kind of filled in the basic area there. It's kind of retaining that shape change with some quick bevels. And I'm gonna re-add in that sphere that I had up here at one point. Just so we can translate that sleeve a little bit better into the torso. Something like that. Yeah. Again, he's got some weird stuff going on in his body. He is a, this is a weird Luigi. One of the weirder Luigis that I've seen. <laughs> Kind of round out his chin, a little bit more rounded just about everywhere. Trying to figure out what's going on with the face. Some form change up here. Might need a little bit more resolution in here just to make this easier to get some of the plane changes. It looks like uh, this blends up pretty well from the neck. So we might have too much volume going on there, but um, yeah, we could sit here and continue to block this out in the face, but I think we should probably move on to the hair and the mustache because the mustache breaks the silhouette. Pretty much everything that we're doing right now is finding anything that um, kind of defines the character, but also more, uh, more so anything that kind of proportionally uh, fits within this range and also breaks the silhouette. So for instance, the mustache is a pretty big uh, part of that. So let's grab a mustache sphere. Oh, I have an extra pair of ears. I did not realize that. I was wondering what that was. I was confused. Fix that up real quick. All right. 
quick mustachio. We'll use the Accu curve to pull out a sharp point. Something like that. I mean, we're not exactly on point there, but we're, we're fairly close. I think we need to be a little bit deeper. And the shape's not quite there. Uh, do you have any tutorials for beginners on your channel? I've gone through the playlist and boy, are there some videos. Uh, yeah, I've been uploading videos on my YouTube channel for quite a while, for the past uh, couple years. So I have uh, a ton of free stuff over on my YouTube channel. Uh, depending on how much of a beginner you are, over on my Gumroad, I have my How To ZBrush Supercut. It's, it's a quick start course essentially get you up and running in ZBrush as quick as possible with what I think are the most um, important tools that you should learn in the early stages. And it will, it will get you up to a point where you have a toolkit that you can begin sculpting. It also includes all my brushes and all of my uh, sculpting materials, as well as my base mesh, this one over here. Uh, it's a pretty good value for everything that you get in it. Uh, all the stuff that you get is that it is in here is actually worth the uh, worth more than the amount that the actual course costs. So you get all of that plus the the course. Uh, on my actual YouTube channel, I don't know how much of a beginner you are. So, like I said, I've been uploading videos for quite a while. Um, I've done a lot of critiques of people's work. So if you want to go through the critiques and maybe find something that you feel is about your level, maybe that's the better route to go. Uh, like I said, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot on there for sure, though. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I can try to answer maybe a little bit better with some more information. All right, that mustache feels uh, a little bit closer to me. It's just that now we're quite a bit flat. We've lost some of the gesture and volume, which is never nice. That's not a good thing. So I think I'll use move back face masking. Oh no. We're about out of time, guys. Just looked at the clock. We've not been paying attention. But luckily we're we're pretty close to being done with with our chunky Luigi. <laughs> um Any tips on the keys you press while you're working? Uh, I have custom hotkeys, so not really. Uh, spacebar pulls up this menu, which is very handy. I use this quite often. Has all the stuff that's at the top of your screen up there. Not all of it, but uh, a good portion of it, uh, as well as some other stuff in there. I use that quite frequently to adjust draw size and focal shift, RGB, Z, intensity, all that good stuff. Um, I have a lot of hotkeys for my brushes. Control key is for masking. Control shift is for selections. I mean, this is all super beginner stuff. So um, in terms of that, uh, you might want to check out the course that I recommended or uh, the uh, Z Classroom tutorials, which go through literally just about everything that you could ever want to know in ZBrush, uh, plus more, which is why I created that quick start course. Um, I think there's a lot of information out there that um, is very hard to wade through in the beginning when you're trying to learn the user interface. So I've tried to simplify that as much as possible. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. So sounds like we found a good mark to hit. All right, guys. So because we only have about five minutes left, 
Um, I will not block out the hair. We looked at the process for how to block out the hair when we were working on uh, the Zelda block out over here, uh, which I'll ploop her back on the screen a little bit larger. Uh, so if you guys have any questions here at the end, now would be the time to ask them before we head out. And it can be, don't, if, if you think it's gonna take too long, don't worry about it, ask it anyway. You might have a quick answer for it. Uh, six Syndicate, are you gonna make the mustache with fiber mesh or geo? Um, geometry, much like I have already. Uh, we're not actually sculpting these entire characters. This was more just an exercise in blocking out characters. So on my YouTube channel uh, today, I released a new video on my process for blocking out characters, uh, which is exactly what we just went through uh, in this live demonstration, blocking out uh, two characters created by Oscar Viga. Uh, you guys should def definitely check out some of his work. But yeah, we just went through the process. If you guys want a more kind of quick streamlined version with even less tools, uh, definitely go check out that video. Uh, it's the most recent video over on YouTube slash Folygon, youtube.com slash Folygon. Uh, I think there's a link uh, somewhere at the top of the screen, not a clickable one, but so you can learn how to spell it if it doesn't say Folygon anywhere on the screen. Uh, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys want to check out more of my work, just Google Folygon. You'll find my art station and everything else, as well as my Gumroad, which I think I just mentioned uh, with my new course, Mastering Appeal, which just launched last Thursday. Uh, and class starts on the 28th, I believe. Yes, the 28th of this month. So in a little over two weeks. Uh, and there are five seats left. for uh, So for those that are interested in a course taught by me, it's a seven and a half week, about a seven and a half week long course. Uh, you guys can check that out and find out more info on that as well over on my gum road. Uh, but yes, I believe that is it. I'm not seeing any additional questions at this time. So again, pretty much, <laughs> man, this this lumpy mess here. Uh, it's, it's, it's bugging me, so I'm gonna have to remesh it. But pretty much just using insert spheres or just really primitive geometry. We have cylinders and stuff here for like the legs. Uh, really simple stuff. Uh, remember that in the, we'll go back to Zelda here. Oh, come on. He's like stuck, I can't rotate him, there we go. Uh, remember that in the early stages of blocking out when you are, let me turn some of this off. When you are working on the body of your character, do not spend time uh, focusing on proportions really early. Just focus on getting all of the geometry and parts and pieces in there. So start getting the head, the torso, the legs, the arms, and then after you get all that in, then start worrying a little bit more about proportions and maybe line some stuff up with a reference image and go from there. Um, it's, it's really easy to get carried away with a lot of that stuff early, uh, too early. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. And as always, I'm always available for questions over on my YouTube channel. If you guys leave a comment, I read them all, so check them out. And I think that'll be where we end for tonight. So thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, I think Jose is going to be, I believe Jose is streaming after me. Let me double check. Yes, Jose is streaming in just an hour. Uh, doing some uh, concepting uh, for creatures and character production, which sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, stick around. Make sure you click that follow or subscribe button, whatever is down below, wherever you're watching, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, whatever it is. And I will see you at the same time, same place next Tuesday, 6 o'clock uh, U.S. Eastern time. So that's, I think, minus 4, minus 5 GMT, depending on daylight savings time. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next Tuesday or maybe over on my YouTube channel. All right, see you guys.